Hey, what's up guys? Well, time for a new video and today we're going to do a subscriber request that could easily turn into a series, okay? So, what question did I get? Well, uh, I received a reference image of a medieval scene and it has wall sections and all sorts of cool stuff going on and the question that I received was can you demonstrate how to make modular segments uh, for a room like that that can be used over and over again but in a way that they don't always look identical, okay? So we're gonna go through the entire workflow. We're gonna model in UV uh, in Maya. We're gonna have a texture in Photoshop, and then we're gonna bring it all into Substance Painter to tweak it so we can use it over and over, all right? So here we go. Okay guys, well, let's get started. So this is the uh, reference image that I received, and uh, what we're gonna look at today is how we can set up modular elements so you can use them multiple times without having a very obvious repetition in your scene, okay? So what we're gonna look at in this scene right here is you have this section between these two uh, protruding sections here. So the area with the painting, you have wood paneling on the wall and then you have a rock texture in the back. This section is repeated right here and repeated right here in this scene, okay? But there are different uh, pictures in the frame, you got different objects here, you got a cupboard and so forth. So that's one way to do it, okay? Now, because we want to do this for a game type scenario, we want to keep this extremely low poly, all right? So let's go into Maya and start to model in UV this section right here. Then we're gonna go into Photoshop. We're gonna set up the primary textures and then we're gonna bring it into Substance Painter, okay? Here we go. Okay, so we're in Maya. Let's uh, close this down. We're gonna take a uh, simple polygon plane that's way too much subdivision, so I'm going to hit Control A to open up my attribute editor. I'm going to go in and set my subdivision level to one by one, which is fine. I'm going to hit R to scale this out in the proportion that I want for the top section. Let's call out the rock section, if you will. And then I'm going to right click at an edge, select this edge, hit Control E to extrude, W to pull up just very, very slightly, as that will be the top of that wood panel. And then we're gonna hit G to repeat last command, and W to push down for the section that we want to be wood paneling, okay? So it'll be something like this. Maybe bring this down just a little bit. All right, so if we're happy with this object, we obviously need to UV it. So we're gonna right click the object mode, going to go to UV and uh, let's do an automatic projection and then we're going to go into UV and UV editor. I'll move this over here so we can see it better and let's see what we got. If I right click and go to shell and I hover over this you can see that's the top part and that's my bottom part and here we have that small section okay. So I'm going to right click go to edge select that edge and it corresponds with the one up there and we're going to go to move and so edges and let's hit the G to repeat that, there we go. Right click shell, here's the whole thing. I'm gonna rotate and rotate, and let's bring that down in here. And let's hit R and scale that up until we basically touch the edges there, like so. And I'm happy with that, all right? So I'm gonna right click the object mode, and uh, actually we're gonna uh, export the UV snapshot first. So I'm gonna make sure that the shell is selected. Let's go to polygons. We're gonna do UV snapshot. I'll hit browse, go to my desktop. I'll call this UV snapshot, hit save. I'm gonna do a one by one K uh, size, which is fine. I'm gonna leave all of that alone. Let's do a uh, JPEG. We're gonna leave the range alone, zero to one means this top right corner here, and we're just gonna hit okay, all right? So let's uh, jump into Photoshop, here we go. All right, so we're in uh, Photoshop. I'm gonna to go to uh, File and Open, and I'm gonna look for my UV snapshot, okay? There we go. Now, this is white on black. I prefer to see uh, black on white to make it a little bit more clear, so I'm gonna hit Control-I to invert that like so, and then I'm gonna double click on this layer to get that lock off of it, okay? Now, we're not gonna be doing anything on this layer, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new layer right there, and we're gonna go up to uh, File, Place Embedded, 
and I'm gonna look for a texture that I found online and uh, let's see where is that hang on I'm gonna move this up into that corner right there like so and I'm gonna hold down shift and left click and drag and let's get this into that area right there we can kind of stretch that out a little bit if it's not too crazy otherwise you're just gonna scale it up a little bit more as long as you make sure that you cover that area right so i'm happy with that i'm going to hit enter i'm going to add a new layer for the bottom part and i'm going to go up to file place embedded once again and this time i'm going to go with the wood panel so i found these uh, textures on uh, textures.com uh, but if you have other sources that's fine so we got this guy we're going to bring that in and i'm going to place that in the corner right there and I'm going to hold on shift once again and drag that up until we meet that area up there. And then I can push it in. And again, you know, if the stretching isn't too crazy, you're fine. Okay. So I'm going to hit enter here. This is basically how my wall will look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my UV layer and delete it. I don't need that anymore. Take these two and right click and go to merge layers. So now that I have this layer, I can go up to, uh, let's see, 3D, and we're gonna go to, hang on, uh, sorry, under filter to 3D and generate normal map, okay? Now, if you don't have this uh, version of Photoshop or you don't have this plugin, there are a lot of apps out there that will allow you to turn a picture into a normal map. Uh, I think one is called the uh, bump to map and uh, there are several others. So just Google that. Okay. I'll put a link uh, below if I can find a few. All right. So we're going to generate normal map. And actually let's just cancel that for one sec because we have to save this out as our diffuse first. Okay. So uh, let's take these two again. We're going to right click and merge layers. I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'll call this Diffuse. I'll save it out as a JPEG on my desktop. All right. And OK. And now we can go into Filter 3D Normal Map. And there we go. And here you have the option to invert the height or not. In this case, I want it to be inverted so it will look like this. You can uh, push the blur up. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm gonna leave that down. You can increase or decrease the detail scale depending on what you like. And there are a number of settings you can play with here. For example, if you want to have a texture tiled and so forth, you can do that here in X and Y, but I'm not gonna do that, okay? So I'm happy with how this is looking. Uh, I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna go to file and uh, save as. Once again, a JPEG, and I'll save this as my normal. Okay, and once again, save it on my desktop and hit OK. Now we're gonna jump back into uh, Maya, hang on. And one more thing we need to do is export our model as an OBJ, right? So we got it selected in object mode. We're gonna go up to File, Export Selection, right there. I'm going to call this a wall and it's selected as an OBJ and export selection. Okay. So now that we have all that, we can jump into Substance Painter. Here we go. All right. So we're going to go up to uh, File. We're going to go to New. I'm going to leave this at PBR Metal Rough. We're going to go and select our mesh, which is our wall. There we go. And let's see, uh, import mesh, normal maps, and the bake maps for all materials. Okay, so we have a um, diffuse and a normal, and they're both selected. We're going to hit OK. It will bring in our model. Let's see if it's here, and it is, and it looks fine. OK. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go in and we're going to select the bake textures. Not much to bake right now, but we need them as placeholders. So we're gonna bake that. We're just gonna bake everything. We'll get a few error messages because we didn't make a selection, but that's fine. Okay, 
So now a normal map has been created and so forth. All right. Okay, so time to, uh, let's hang on, let's reset this, reset UI. Time to bring in our textures, okay? So I'm gonna go to my texture layer right here and I'm gonna go up to uh, file and uh, let's see, import resources, okay? Now in here, add resources, I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna select my diffuse and my normal, open that up. And for these two, I need to select what it is. So instead of undefined, I'm gonna call that texture and I'm gonna call it texture. And then down here, do I want them for this session or for future use and so forth? Current session only and hit import. And these two have now been imported, okay? All right, so what next? Well, I need a new fill layer. So I got this going on here and layer one. So we're gonna go up to add a new fill layer right there, like so. And then in that fill layer, you have a couple of options. You've got color, height, and so forth. Now I want my diffuse texture to be on my color, obviously. So I'm gonna go to my color, make sure it's turned on. Yeah, there we go. And here is my base color. So I'm gonna left click and drag my diffuse. Don't drop it onto the white, go slightly up and drop it onto that bar where it says base color, okay? Now, as you do that, you can see it's been applied, but it looks weird. For the simple reason that if you look here at the EV scale, we need to adjust that. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna change that into one and we're good, okay? So here is my texture, and next what I wanna do is I wanna bring in my normal map. So I'm gonna to go to my height tab right there, and I wanna bring that into the height. So I'm gonna left click and drag my normal map. I'm gonna drag that on top of that height bar right there. And as we do that, you can see that it has been applied nicely. All right, so now you have one of these panels done. Um, what if you want to create some diversity, okay? Now, you probably know that you can go up to uh, File and Export Textures right there. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go in, we're gonna create a new layer. Uh, let's see, add a regular new layer. And that will give us a brush, okay? Right now that brush has white paint on it, so we can go in, we can change that to, let's say, black paint. And then we can go into the grunges, for example, and we'll select one here, just called dirt. I'm gonna push up the size of my brush. So go back up, increase that size. There we go, maybe even a bit more. And I don't want it to be too black. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna push the flow down a little bit, which will give us something like this, okay? So if you're gonna repeat multiple panels like this in your scene, what you can do is just grunge them up a little bit. And then each one, you'll do that in a different way so they don't look all the same, okay? So if you want some spots or grunges or whatnot in your scene, you can make this one look like this. You can go in and use different colors on the next one and so forth. And then if you add certain elements like cupboards and tables with objects on it and so forth, you can use this uh, modular piece over and over and over again, okay? So that's all there's to it, guys. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, as always. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done already. And that said, i uh, love to see you guys again. Bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.